Imagine you're standing in a living green cathedral. It's a bit warm, as we are in the lowlands, the tropics of Costa Rica. Dozens of bird species are singing. And you can hear howler monkeys that are just out of view. This is a dynamic forest. It's complex. And it's a magical place to be. But this particular patch of forest has a really amazing story to tell. And I'll think about it as a good comeback story. 30 years ago, this patch of forest didn't exist. Here there were cows happily grazing in a pasture amidst scattered remnant trees. What happened here is happening all over the tropics. And as the forests regrow, we know that they regrow here in New England. Tropical forests are also regrowing all across the tropics. They'll grow back anywhere and any time they are given a chance. Here on the left, this is in Hainan Island, China. Forests are regrowing there. And on the right, in Paraná, in Brazil. Tropical forests will regrow wherever they have an opportunity. Often in the aftermath of once thriving human civilizations, regeneration is what they evolved to do. And they've been doing this for 100 million years. They know better than anyone else how to restore themselves. And what is limiting their self-recovery is only lack of opportunity. We can give them this opportunity by leveraging their regenerative capacities and helping tropical forests to recover from a wide range of human-caused disturbances, including deforestation, logging, and conversion to agriculture. As a forest ecologist, I've studied tropical forest regeneration for more than 30 years in the lowlands of Costa Rica and also with collaborators in Mexico, Brazil, and Australia. We've been following the recovery process in areas that were formerly pastures, croplands, and selectively logged forests. We monitored trees for over 20 years. We got to know 15,000 trees personally. There's one tagged there. We understand now many of the ecological processes that govern this transition from fields into forests. And when I retired from the University of Connecticut eight years ago, I really wanted to work with forest restoration and to make this regeneration process more visible and more widely used in the whole forest restoration process. It should be on the menu. I learned instead that practically all of forest restoration was about tree planting, often using non-native trees growing in monocultures. As you see here, this is a eucalyptus plantation in Brazil. These single species plantations offer very poor habitats for most native species. They can rapidly deplete water supplies, and they often fail to reduce soil erosion. So I learned that reforestation does not always mean, or does not always lead to forest restoration or to the recovery of native biodiversity. Native tree reforestation with multiple species is being adapted in some regions, and this has a much greater emphasis on ecological benefits rather than a focus on commercial benefits. Here's a 10-year-old plantation of native tree species in Rio de Janeiro State, Brazil. This kind of tree planting with mixtures of native species is a very effective way to restore ecosystems, but it is really expensive. Restoration plantings like this can cost well over $1,000 per acre. Can this costly activity reach the scale that is needed to mitigate climate change and biodiversity loss? 
I'm afraid not. So we set out to look at where forests are regenerating already and where we can predict that they're going to regenerate in the future. We started doing this in the Atlantic forests of Brazil, where between 1995 and 2015, 10,000 square miles of forest regrew on its own. This is equivalent to the area of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. It's a big area. And at the global scale, from the year 2000 to 2012, we learned that tropical forests regrew across an area larger than the state of Arizona at the global scale. So now that we have mapped where forests have regenerated in the world, we can use this information to predict where they're likely to, or where they're going to be able to regrow in the future. And when we did this in Brazil's Atlantic forest, we found that areas that were suitable for assisted natural regeneration accounted for 30% of the entire restorable area. Think about it this way. These areas that are indicated in blue on this map have the right ingredients in the site and in the surrounding landscape to stimulate natural regeneration with little or no help. So we just need to let the cooking begin and adjust the recipe if needed. At the global scale, we recently published this paper in Nature that showed that over 830,000 square miles of deforested land across the tropics have conditions that are suitable for natural regeneration, based on the similar kind of model that we did for Brazil. This is larger than the entire country of Mexico. It's an enormous area that has this potential. So now we're finally getting to scale here. And the cost of restoring forests in this way is so much more affordable because we're getting Mother Nature to fit most of the bill. So how do we move this process forward to benefit ecosystems, people, and ensure the stability of our planet? There are four ways. First, where forests are still standing, protect them and minimize the degradation. We need to maintain forest fragments in landscapes. These are the source of ecological memory providing the seeds, the remnant trees, the root stocks that provide the ingredients for trees and forests to regrow. Second, we need to be much more strategic about the way we restore land forests and how we can enhance the integrity of landscapes. For example, where are the areas where tree planting is really needed? And where can native forests be more easily brought back to life without needing to plant trees or as many trees? Here we see some examples where natural regeneration can be a very effective way to restore forests in a landscape on steep slopes, adjacent to forest fragments, in the buffer zones of protected areas, and even within protected areas and along biological corridors. The third way is to become partners with nature and to work with nature. Where the conditions are suitable, we can encourage practices that assist the natural recovery of forests by removing the obstacles that are getting in the way. For example, we can create fire breaks. We can control invasive species. We can put up fences to keep cows and grazing animals out of the forest. There are many things that we can do to promote the natural recovery of forests. And this is the key to our partnership. This is where the partnership really kicks in. And we're working together with nature. And finally, we need to protect these young, regenerating forests and give them a chance. These forests are very vulnerable to reclearance because they have little or no value. They're viewed that way. And we need to enhance their value 
for farmers, and for local communities. One way to do this is through a payment for environmental services program, where private landowners are receiving payments for protecting their land and helping forests to regrow naturally. On this large cattle ranch in Costa Rica, forests began to regrow at different times. The farm has now become a nature refuge, and they were able to restore 220 acres of land using natural regeneration here through this program in Costa Rica. The two people walking on this trail are my children. And since their childhood, they watched this forest grow up. They're older than this forest. And they learned that we are a part of nature, just as nature is a part of us. Let's give forests the opportunity to regrow, to regrow future trees, future animals, and future people by helping bring new forests back to life, we can recover our connection with the natural world that nourishes our body and spirit. Thank you.